Welcome to track number 5 of the Mysteries of God. <laughs> now, a casual Christian all right, will um, come to a wrong conclusion about either prosperity or poverty. A casual Christian. You will by all means come to a wrong conclusion if you are casual in your approach to prosperity and if you like poverty, the opposite of prosperity. Where is Amma? You're right. She gone into labor or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So the casual Christian will come to a wrong conclusion. Do you know why? Because uh, it is easy to come to a conclusion that God wants us to be either prosperous or poor by a casual glance at the Bible. For instance, let's take which one should we start with poverty or prosperity? Poverty. Okay. <laughs> Why do you want poverty first? You want to end on a good note. <laughs> okay. I mean, we don't even have to read. I'll read one verse at the end of this mystery. But, and that is in, in Philippians. But, I mean, you don't have to read. You know them. What did Jesus have? Nothing. His will on earth was he gave his mother, said, this, sir, uh, John, look after her for me. <laughs> and he left. You get it? He had nothing to leave behind and his clothes were shared. Finish. Alright? Uh, he, he said foxes have holes. People have places to live. I don't have anything. You get it? He talked about losing his life. If anyone will not take up his cross and come after me. If anyone will gain his life, he'll lose it. If he'll lose his life, he'll gain it. The teachings of suffering. Last year at the Iron Sharpen of Iron Camp, I, share, I preached about suffering for Christ for hours only the word suffer suffering, suffered those were the words I was preaching about at the camp suffer, suffering, suffered suffers, suffered <laughs> I tell you Christ has died leaving us an example that we should also suffer so, the traditional, uh, what do you call it, is easy to see that there's nothing in Christianity. It's not a place to come and make money. You get it? Easily we shift to the prosperity, where we have the prosperity teachers. And there are even more clearer scriptures there. But my God shall supply all your needs. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God gives us the power to make wealth. We are charismatic, so we know that those verses better than the poverty ones. No good thing would he withhold from them that walk uprightly. David died full of riches, honor, 
He was made poor that we might be made rich. Huh? We have more verses. So, and since we are charismatics, we've grown up with that mind that God wants us to be rich. Unfortunately, it has also misled us to become a greedy church. And the greed of the temple dwellers is keeping people away from the house of God now. Yeah, just like it was in Jesus' days when he went to the temple and the people who were in the church were money-minded. Mercy. You understand what I'm saying? I said the people who were in the church were money-minded people doing business. And today, two money-minded people have filled the church. <laughs> we, this is the most money-minded church you can ever have that we have today. Everybody in the church is after something. And everybody is seeing how he can benefit from the church and from being in God. And many of us come to God for protection and blessings. <laughs> That's why if you are a pastor and you want you, you, you want to take an offering three hundred dollars for a breakthrough in three days. It will come right now. Seven dollars for this, for seven days, something. This, this, that, that, fourteen dollars, forty one blessings on something. Charlie? Forty one dollar offering. I mean I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But I mean I'm just telling you that we respond to that because we are tuned to that. Just like if I mention Kenke or Fufu or Shito or something for some of us here, Fufu, I mean, so I mean, yourself will come. You understand? <laughs> because you are, you are sort of tuned to that kind of food. But if you don't know that food, they say, Fufu, what's that? There's that way. I don't know that. You know, I want my steak and my this and my that and whatever, whatever kind of food you like. What do you think? So we are tuned to process. What you mentioned, then our eyes begin to glitter. <laughs> we become. You understand what I say? Yourself comes. Uh, yourself. The you, yourself. You actually come forth. <laughs> <laughs> don't think about bad things just think about pure things <laughs> Zimbo And any time we become too used to one thing, we are probably going off course. And we are likely to be going off somewhere. Because when you read the Bible, there is not only a picture of prosperity, but indeed there is a picture of great sacrifice and the loss of all things. Paul said, for Christ, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but down, that I may gain Christ. If you don't know, I am telling you, he lost everything for this Christ whom we are all following. And he, we, if we were writing that, we said, Christ, for whom I have gained all things. <laughs> Through whom I have gained all things. We are almost the opposite of Paul. We can hardly relate with Paul. That's why in the final quest, when Rejoiner was speaking to Paul, Paul, he told Paul, or Paul said to him, I cannot recognize the ministry and the message that is being preached in the church. He says, apart from a few spots in the world, we cannot recognize what they are talking about. Yeah. You come to a church and you, we are more, we are, like, we are like a bank, banks, having a seminar. We have become Gimpa, if you know Gimpa in Ghana, management schools. 
teaching, success, leadership, economic empowerment, enhancement, life skills, stock exchange. You have churches with big signboard outside, stock exchange seminar. Oh, it's not something that I'm saying. Something that's real. That I'm not imagining, I'm not postulating. Pastors like myself will be invited to speak in a bank. Why would somebody like me be invited to a bank? To speak. Think about it. Because we are seen as successful, rich, wealthy. And we can also come and, you know, do whatever. And we ourselves, we like it. So when a pastor is invited to such a place, to him it is an honor. And he's going higher. When the world says, ah, well done. And the devil comes and says, good boy. We like your style. You have a crossover appeal. You appeal to the church and you appeal to the world. Zigzag. And so, mysteriously, we lose contact with God. Because we have come, become focused on something and are possessed with a mind about something that God must do. This is the will of God. God's will is mysterious. If you follow him, (laughs) I can't even say for you how your life will be. It's a mysterious thing. Whether he will want you to be rich or whether he will want you to be poor. I mean, at first we used to say everybody will be rich. You know, do this, seven steps. Give this, have a vision. This is step one, have a vision. Step two, have a goal. Number three, take steps to accomplish your goal. Number four, give. Number five, this. Number six, we have them. Please, we have more steps. If you need steps, see me after church. I'll give you a step. (laughs) How many have followed some steps? You still haven't gone so far. (laughs) The books are there. The things are there. But what I can say is that it's a mystery. Yeah. Because I do not think... Jesus said you always have the poor with you. If these principles are so 100% proof, foolproof, then we should not have any poor people anymore. The principles should eradicate poverty everywhere and in every church from everybody. But I can tell you that... The Welcome to track number five of the Mysteries of God. (laughs) Now, a casual Christian all right, will um, come to a wrong conclusion about either prosperity or poverty. A casual Christian. You will by all means come to a wrong conclusion if you are casual in your approach to prosperity and if you like poverty, the opposite of prosperity. Where is Amma? You're right. She gone into labor or something. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the casual Christian will come to a wrong conclusion. You know why? Because Uh, it is easy to come to a conclusion that God wants us to be either prosperous or poor by a casual glance at the Bible. For instance, let's take, which one should we start with? Poverty or prosperity? Poverty. Okay. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Why do you want poverty first? You want to end on a good note. <laughs> okay. 
I mean, we don't even have to read. I'll read one verse at the end of this mystery. But, and that is in, in Philippians. But, I mean, you don't have to read. You know them. What did Jesus have? Nothing. His will on earth was he gave his mother, said, this, sir, uh, John, look after her for me. <laughs> and he left. You get it? He had nothing to leave behind and his clothes were shared. Finish. All right? Uh, he, he said foxes have holes. People have places to live. I don't have anything. You get it? He talked about losing his life. If anyone will not take up his cross and come after me, if anyone will gain his life, he'll lose it. He'll lose his life, he'll gain it. The teachings of suffering. Last year at the Iron Shepherd of Iron Camp, I, share, I preached about suffering for Christ for hours. On, only the word suffer, suffering, suffered. Those were the words I was preaching about at the camp. Suffer. Suffering, suffered, suffers, suffered. <laughs> I tell you, Christ has died, leaving us an example that we should also suffer. So, the traditional, uh, what do you call it? It's easy to see that there's nothing in Christianity. It's not a place to come and make money. You get it? Easily we shift to the prosperity where we have the prosperity teachers. And there are even more clearer scriptures there. But my God shall supply all your needs. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God gives us the power to make wealth. We are charismatic, so we know that those verses better than the poverty ones. No good thing would he withhold from them that walk uprightly. David died full of riches, honor. He was made poor that we might be made rich. Huh? We have more verses. So, and since we are charismatics, we've grown up with that mind that God wants us to be rich. Unfortunately, it has also misled us to become a greedy church. And the greed of the temple dwellers is wow. keeping people away from the house of God now. Yeah, just like it was in Jesus' days when he went to the temple. And the people who were in the church were money minded mercy you understand what I'm saying I say the people who were in the church were money minded people doing business and today to money minded people have failed the church <laughs> we, this is the most money minded church you can ever have that we have today everybody in the church is after something and everybody is seeing how he can benefit from the church and from being in God. And many of us come to God for protection and blessings. <laughs> That's why if you are a pastor and you want, you, you, you want to take an offering, $300 for a breakthrough in three days, it will come right now. $7 for this, for seven days, something. This, this, that, that. $14, 41 blessings on something. What's the one dollar offering? I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But, I mean, I'm just telling you that we respond to that because we are tuned to that. Just like if I mention Kenke or Fufu or Shito or something for some of us here, Fufu, I mean, so, I mean, yourself will come. You understand? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> 
because you are you are sort of tuned to that kind of food. But if you don't know that food, they say, "Fufu, what's that? This, that? Way? I don't know that." You know, I want my steak and my this and my that and whatever, whatever kind of food you like. What do you think? Yeah, so we are tuned to process. What you mention, then our eyes begin to glitter. <laughs> we become. You understand what I say? Yourself comes. Yeah. Uh, yourself. The you, yourself. You actually come forth. <laughs> <laughs> don't think about bad things just think about pure things <laughs> Zimbo And any time we become too used to one thing, we are probably going off course. And we are likely to be going off somewhere. Because when you read the Bible, there is not only a picture of prosperity, but indeed there is a picture of great sacrifice and the loss of all things. Paul said, for Christ, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may gain Christ. If you don't know, I am telling you, he lost everything for this Christ whom we are all following. And he, we, if we were writing that, we said, Christ, for whom I have gained all things. <laughs> Through whom I have gained all things. We are almost the opposite of Paul. We can hardly relate with Paul. That's why in the final quest, when Regina was speaking to Paul, Paul, he told Paul, or Paul said to him, I cannot recognize the ministry and the message that is being preached in the church. He says, apart from a few spots in the world, we cannot recognize what they are talking about. Yeah. You come to a church and you, we are more, we are like, we are like a bank, banks, having a seminar. We have become Gimpa, if you know Gimpa in Ghana, management schools, teaching success, leadership, economic empowerment, enhancement, life skills, stock exchange. You have churches with big signboard outside, stock exchange seminar. Oh, it's not something that I'm saying. Something that's real. I'm not imagining. I'm not postulating. Pastors like myself will be invited to speak in a bank. Why would somebody like me be invited to a bank? To speak. Think about it. Because we are seen as successful, rich, wealthy. And we can also come and, you know, do whatever. And we ourselves, we like it. So when a pastor is invited to such a place, to him it is an honor. And he's going higher. When the world says, ah, well done. And the devil comes and says, good boy. We like your style. You have a crossover appeal. You appeal to the church and you appeal to the world. Zigzag. And so, mysteriously, we lose contact with God. Because we have come, become focused on something, and are possessed with a mind about something that God must do. This is the will of God. God's will is mysterious. If you follow Him, (laughs) I can't even say for you, how your life will be. It's a mysterious thing. Whether he will want you to be rich or whether he will want you to be poor. I mean, at first we used to say everybody will be rich. You know, do this, seven steps. Give this, have a vision. This is step one, have a vision. Step two, have a goal. Number three, take steps to accomplish your goal. Number four, give. Number five, this. Number six, we have them. Please, we have more steps. 
If you need steps, see me after church. I'll give you a step. <laughs> How many have followed some steps? You still haven't gone so far. <laughs> the books are there. The things are there. But what I can say is that it's a mystery. Yeah. Because I do not think... Jesus said you always have the poor with you. If these principles are so 100% proof, foolproof, then we should not have any poor people anymore. The principles should eradicate poverty everywhere and in every church from everybody. But I can tell you that the, that the vast majority of Lighthouse members are poor. Yeah. The poor are more, far outnumbering the rich. Far. Any day. We have some people that make you look as if they have most. Even us here, most of us don't have anything. It's true. A few people have some, but most of us don't have anything. Not that I've seen it, but I know. <laughs> oh. oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Is what I'm saying true or is not true? Yeah. We are in America, but I don't have anything. It's like diabetes. Diabetes is starvation in the midst of plenty. The blood is full of sugar. It's so moving around, but it does not enter the cells. So you die of a lack of sugar. You understand? Because what will move the sugar from the blood into the cells which need the sugar? It's not there. So that's why we call it starvation in the midst of plenty. And that's how many of us are. The thing is swimming around. Swimming around. The gold, you can see there. And our mouths are watering. Lord. But the insulin, that will bring it in. <laughs> Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Verse 9. Those things which you have heard, learned, received, in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Amen. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, and now that at last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful. But that, not that you were careful, but you lacked opportunity. Okay? Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatever state I am, their way to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notice verse 12. Paul says, I know how to do it. This, look at me everybody. In this verse he's saying two things. Both I know how and then I am instructed. One he's saying I have been told to do this. And in the other verse and in the first part he's saying I know how to do what I have been told to do. You understand? In other words the first part is I know how to do what I have been told to do. And another one is I have been told to do this. So he's told to do A and B. And then he says, I know how to do A and B. How many understand what I'm saying? If you understand, give me a wave. You didn't get it. Somebody didn't get it. Is there anybody who didn't get it? Maybe you weren't listening. I can say it again. But I, I don't mind. Is there anyone? I, I know how to do. It's like do general math and add math. I know how to do it. And I've been instructed to do add math and general math. Okay, or physics and chemistry. And I know how to do physics and chemistry. And I've been asked to do it anyway. You get it? Uh-huh. Now what are the two things he's been asked to do? One is, you know, he has been asked to abound. Or he says he knows how to abound. 
And then how to be, I mean, how to be a poor man. Then what is the two instructions that he said? He's been asked to do what? To be poor. And to, is, is he instructed or? Is that one instruction? I am instructed to be full and to be hungry and to abound and to suffer need. It's an instruction. Now, here is a mystery. That the God who instructs you to prosper in one day is now instructing you to become poor and to suffer lack and need. And that's the will of God for you. You see, but how many charismatics can you tell this to today? How many of you can I speak to and say, this is your future here. Come from here and go to Asaman Kese. Or go to uh, Dawadawa number one. Which comes after. Uh, be- before you get to uh, Tamale. How many of you I had two gentlemen. You see, and that's what I'm saying. That's one of the things that we lack here in this church. We need things like that. Because you see, in London, I have people that I've sent from London to villages in Ghana. Yeah. I'm serious. Not people who were being, whose visas had expired or who had to leave or, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who were there legitimately and on a long-term basis. And I said, you. Because they came to me and said, Bishop, we are ready. You see, that's why the songs we are singing, Payne, come and sing that song again. Put the words on and sing it slowly. Only you will sing, will listen to what you are saying. (laughs) So that we understand what it means. I don't know whether sometimes, you see, there's something about the plastic saints of today. Jesus does all the dying and we do all the singing about the dying. (laughs) And unfortunately, even the singing has become unreal. And meaningless words that are just being vomited out of our mouths. Sing it. I heard you singing something. Sing it. I want to be where you are. I want to know, Lord, who you are. Okay. So when you call my Uh name, Uh I'll say to you, Uh here I am. Okay. I'm listening, Lord. (laughs) Speak to me. (laughs) I want to see how you see. I want to see how you see. So God is trying to show us the mystery. He sees things differently. Can you imagine how many of us can I ask to be poor? How many of you can I ask to be poor? And say, go and be here. You'll be a poor person there. You see, and that's what he's singing. Sing it. You say what? Sing it. (laughs) Change my heart, Lord. Make me holy. If there's anything in my life that doesn't honor you tonight, I'm listening, listening. Lord. Speak Speak to to me. me. Are you sure? (laughs) Should he speak? (laughs) <laughs> Should he speak? Should he speak? The children of Israel, when Moses will go and he will come and he will say, This one, the Lord said, One of you said, We want to see God ourselves. So he told them, Prepare yourselves for three days. Come ye not at your wives. The Lord shall like it. When the Lord started, they said, We don't like it again. You. Whatever you hear, come and say to us, we are okay. <laughs> we often claim we want to hear from God, but when God really comes, ah, look, this thing, the way it is, uh, you, we, it's okay. <laughs> you just find out whatever He's saying. We would like to be as far as possible. Because we don't really want it. That's what I'm saying that. Today we have plastic saints. Plastic. And Christ must do the dying. And the plastic saints of today will do all the singing about the dying. 
And even the singing is turning into plastic songs. Meaningless songs without feeling. Huh? Plastic cup cannot even break. Cannot even break. Cannot even be touched. Cannot break. This is a bottle. Cannot break. Cannot be touched. This is like plastic. Nobody is bothered. You can preach the hardest message. (laughs) Yeah. Have I told you that story before? <laughs> this guy who said when he gets to heaven and he sees Peter at the gate and Peter says he should go to hell he will say yeah <laughs> I will go. Can you tell me not Peter and Peter? Can you make a like? Yeah. Bomo ya ya. That means you rather go to her. I am not going to. If you want to go, go to her. I am not going to. Her. <laughs> you rather go to hell I'm not going to hell Yeah. So, the plastic saints of today cannot be touched, cannot be broken, cannot be affected by even slaps. (laughs) Changey. (laughs) <laughs> Breaky <laughs> No change That's the plastic saints Of today That's the church That's why sometimes even in Accra, I prefer to preach outside to unbelievers. I was telling my child, I said, Christmas Day, I went to the prison. 26th Sunday, I said, oh, let's not go to the prison. I was so happy in the prayer. I went to the female prison, condemned cells and other cells. I went to preach there. Oh, see them clapping, thinking, and pray, preach to them. Oh. Went to the Aruan, was lady, she had given birth to twins. Hmm. These are the people that Christ died for. You see the plastic saints of the church with their prosperity and shiny cars. You see, when I talk like that, I'm not against those things. So I'm saying it to, you see, because we are so plastic, I need to even, even the, I knock it hard, right? It doesn't change anything. But we are so we are so rich because we feel we found the will of God. You haven't found nothing. His will is mysterious. God can wake up and tell you to give everything away. Oh. Have you forgotten the young ruler who came to Jesus? He said, Lord, what should I do to go to heaven? And what did the Lord say? Go and sell. 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 But today's pastor would have said, uh, Peter, will you come here right now, Peter? <laughs> Remember, originally I told you that we were going to be 12 disciples. Uh, there has been a change. <laughs> I've seen a 13th apostle now. 
<laughs> uh, you see, Peter, there are certain things you may not understand. It's mysterious, you know. <laughs> Originally, I, I, I planned for 12. But uh, you see, finance are very important in the ministry. And uh, this uh, man who has come to the church is very important for our future, especially to finance the crusades in Galilee and Capernaum and other places that we'll be going to very soon. And uh, Pastor, I want you to, uh, Peter, I want you to really be very, uh, don't bother. Occasionally may challenge you about certain things and so on, but uh, just take it like that. We need certain uh, finances from here, from here and there. Yeah, today's church. Am I, am I lying? Yeah, they've made him a board member. He's the thirteenth apostle. Easy. Easy, easy. Hmm? Jesus said, Go and sell all and come and follow me, and you shall have riches in heaven. Which pastor can say that today to a member who comes? Sometimes members are converted, they own discotheques, nightclubs, and so on, they come to the church. We can't say. We can't say. I remember one guy, he was a high up, whatever. The job he was doing was making cigarettes. And another one of our pastors was working for Guinness, making alcohol. Another of our pastors was working in a tobacco, co- making, selling cigars. We are not directly involved in actual making of this alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> administrative jobs and other things that you know come in from time to time. <laughs> Just uh, marketing and other administrative, you know, because of my MBA and other qualifications, you know, I'm actually in demand, you know what I mean. <laughs> No, we wouldn't change it. How many of you can I say to you, leave your money, leave your gold, leave your profession. Leave it and come. That's why I look so strange to you and I'm not strange to you. <laughs> 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 like Bishop has left everything. Oh, look. That's what the Reverend Saki and I, we just say, hey, Charlie, we thank God that we obeyed God when we obeyed Him. Because when we obeyed, we didn't have anything. <laughs> We had the potential, but we didn't have anything. And with that potential, at least we gave up the potential. Yeah? We gave up the potential. And you don't know what that means. God knows. We see we see it in heaven. Yeah, it's mysterious. So, you know, I want to say something for you, for, for you right now. Because almost all of us are guided by only this particular thing. What is the will of God is what will be financially good for you. If it's not financially good for you, it is not the will of God. You, you, you. Almost every single one here, I'm telling you. That's how you see the will of God. It must financially be very at least safe, secure, and to a point. Otherwise, it's not the will of God. Shame on you. You are lost. When did money become the Holy Spirit? When you see money, then the Holy Spirit. No money, no Holy Spirit. When? When did a dollar exchange itself for the Spirit of God? When? And yet that is your hallmark. That is your guiding post. How can you walk with God? How can the will of God be done in your life? It cannot be. I will only use nobody but Jesus Christ. Because I don't want to bless. Even you may challenge me if I use an apostle or somebody. Do only Jesus. And what he said. Because he is our savior. And he is our example. And think about what he told to this rich man. Go and sell it. 
will come. You have riches in heaven. That's when Jesus brought up that famous statement. How hardly shall a rich man enter into the kingdom? It will be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in heaven. And it is true. And anybody who is rich and prosperous and has to become more prosperous, it's more difficult for you to obey God. More difficult. You have more things to consider. Yeah. More and more and more and more things. More. Oh, Holy Spirit has been replaced by dollar. Somebody give me a dollar or anything you have. Hmm? You don't have a new one. <laughs> Money is old. I like new ones. Somebody give me a new. You know, six weeks after circulation, you can find urine, feces, HIV, blood on money. <laughs> this is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. For almost the whole church, this is the Holy Spirit. When He says go, you, you move. And you move fast. Look at it. Look at your master. I finished preaching. Look at it carefully. That's a, if he is not there and he's not enough, it means God is not there. When Paul was asked to be poor, he said, I'm asking you to now suffer need. I'm using the exact words of the King James Version. I am instructed to suffer need. You can't send them. You can't say go. Because they have too much or potential for that. Huh? What do you think? Easy. Easy, easy. So, Ladies and gentlemen, remember this, because after I finish preaching this message, we'll go back to our old lives again. All our lives will be related to dollars, 20, 30, 10, this. That's why when you're even raising funds or asking people to give up things, so tedious and laborious. And you are, people are giving you their gods. Can you pick one of my gods, <laughs> my idols? I've got 17 idols. Okay, take two. Have one. That's why one. That's one of the reasons of the mysteries of giving. It makes you break the power of the God, of Mammon. It's one of the mysteries. We will talk about the mysteries of giving. Yeah. Since when did God's will have to be with a financial plan? And you see, it's because we follow that. Let me let me just say something to you. By the grace of God, several decisions that I have made have been delinked from finances. Through delinking it from money, it has rather led to many more blessings. Yeah, like for instance, coming full time. As soon as I delinked it from uh, finances, future, this, that, that, a few, few people. I don't know who was there in 1989. Just a few. You know. No hope, no future. You get it? That thing, that decision, has rather released more wealth and blessing because I am not poor. No, no, if you think I'm poor, I, I can tell you that I'm not poor. I don't need your thousand dollars, I don't need your hundred dollars, I don't need anything from you. And I often say this because that, you don't give things to people because they are in need. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you, have to have, you have to grow and have a spiritual reason for giving. Don't give because oh, we, we think, you know, so that we, we pastors will come around, come and make ourselves very poor looking and really sound, you know, really needy, you know, and sound appealing. Like one pastor one day he was preaching and he said, 
As I'm preaching, I don't even know how I'll go. Oh, 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 I don't have any money. He didn't have any money in his pocket. Yeah. And you can imagine after church. This was in 1989. People, a lot of people gave him money. No, we are not going to do that. Hmm? Are you listening? What was I telling you? I was saying something to you. Delinking money. Delink money from decisions. I took the decision before time. Delink from prosperity. No prosperity. No. And when you are coming full time, I will promise you poverty. Otherwise, don't come. Yeah. And I mean it. Because I can't guarantee. Because I am not God. The fact that I have been blessed financially even in the ministry does not mean you will be blessed and read it. You say, I have instructed you to be poor, to be hungry. So how can I know what you're going to stay to be? Yeah. No, no, it's true. I can't guarantee anybody at all. I don't guarantee you anything. If you don't like it, don't come. It's a mysterious thing. <laughs> yeah, I cannot guarantee you anybody anything. Easy, easy. I've come into your territory now, isn't it? Dollars. <laughs> huh? They link it. It brings blessing. It releases yourself to God. Now you are God's, not money. When I said, let's write books, I said, I don't want anything from a book. No money. Who? Probably by the end of this year, we would probably cross over a million books. I don't want anything. And if I'm to get even a dollar for a book that I've written, or half a dollar, I, I should have something. Do you understand? I, I don't want it. I delink myself from that thing. It makes it free for the books to be released. The books go and they go to people who need them and people who will read them and people who want them. And it goes far and further and it makes the ministry different. Oh. You may not know, but many books cannot be. When you, when, when you, when you, once we have some guys, some people who get copyright, then they will start. You cannot print this. You cannot sell here. You cannot do this. You cannot. Even when Yogicho came to Ghana, we wanted to print his book during the crusade so that he would have copyright. You cannot. You cannot print the book. You cannot. So it's like the book is restricted to some people somewhere. Everything is changed, different because of the publishing something, something. Oh. I have so many people printing my books now. Every time I see, but I haven't seen one before. I see. When I was coming, I saw my Art of Leadership book. I saw they have printed soft cover in Nigeria. They printed it in Russia. And they brought it. They're selling it. It's marvelous. I don't, I don't. I said, you want to print? Print it. And they are fighting over themselves to print my books. Nigeria, different places. And I said, this is your book. I said, it's wonderful. Because mine is that I've written it and that it's going far. To places. That's my that, and it's disconnected from money. So you see, once you are dealing things from money, you are you are released so far and so fast and so deep. But as soon as it's connected to money, because often often there cannot be enough, do you understand, to to to, to, to get it. Are you there? Often there cannot be enough, what do you call it, money, to pay for you to be in the ministry. It's not enough. What do you think? No, I mean, I take someone like Tegu, a very expensive person. You know, it's one of the few computer, whatever, uh, scientists in the whole of Ghana and Africa, something science exam that nobody has done. I mean, very expensive person. You don't get such people. You see, it's, it's, it's expensive. If you are expensive, you know, cannot easily. Nice doctors and intelligent intelligentsia. <laughs> Doctor Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You know yourselves. <laughs> Clever people, expensive people. Some of us are almost too good for the ministry. Not, not almost, we are too good for the ministry. It's true, it's true, it's true. And we are too nice for the ministry and too qualified for the ministry, too blessed for the ministry, too rich for God to use, too much. It's true. Is it not true? Yeah. We, we connect ourselves to what we think we are worth. But you are worth nothing. When I was, one time, I was having a meeting with my pastors and there was a guy there. He said to me, Bishop, I want to say something. I said, say. He said some years ago when the church started, he was a student, I think, or he was working as a lab technician, x-ray something. And he said he was with a professor, pathology professor, or a professor. And the professor asked him, what are you going to do today? He said, I'm going to church. And he said, what church? And he said, Lighthouse. And he said, who is the pastor of Lighthouse? And he said, Dike Ward Mills. And the professor started laughing. Oh, he said, no, he was telling us the story. He said, so I said to them, oh, prof, why are you laughing? And he said, he asked the question, Dike Ward Mills, is he normal? Is he normal? He said, is he normal? Why do you ask, is he normal? He said, does a normal person behave like that? Does a normal person start a church? Yeah. See these medical school people? They despise us. And they despise a church. A church is despised. In God's word, is despised. Me, I'm the same person that professors have called me. I've led two professors to Christ from the same medical school. Oh, yeah. Call me. I remember one professor come and say, Come. I had, he, he called me in about five or six different ways and two different people. I said, You know, let me find his house. When I walked into us, he taught me. Big professor sitting there in a the wheelchair. And I said, Good morning, sir. Because I'm still a student. <laughs> I was trembling. And I sat by him. And I didn't know what to say. So I started to talk. I said, you sent from? He said, yes. Talk to him. Do you want to accept Christ? Huh? Yeah. Will you say this? Yeah. So I said, say. I was alone with him. He said, say this. Lord Jesus, he couldn't even speak. Have mercy on me. Oh, but you could make the words he was saying, but it was very jumbled up. He said it, and I led him to Christ. You are laughing at me? Keep laughing. One day, everything would turn around. You what? The Bible said, "Day that ten minutes to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever." Keep laughing. Keep mocking us. Look down on the church, look down on the pastor, look down on the priest. Your days on this earth are numbered. The reason why you don't want to die is this is the only place you'll be on it, on this earth. Wow. This is the only place you ever have anything. It's only here. In a few years that will be here. Keep laughing at us. Keep laughing. Keep laughing. Keep watching. If you look at my hair, you see that it's getting gray finishing. The period is coming to an end. I was tw- I, when I was 25 years old, I was a pastor. I was already a pastor. If I live to be 50, that would be in a few years' time. I'll be 50. I've done the 25 to 50. Keep laughing. The reason why you want to stay here forever and ever is because there is nothing anywhere. This is the only place somebody will salute you or the only place you may have a key to sleep at any comfortable place. I was with Bishop Nick. He told me he was taken to heaven. He saw a place, a house there on a hill. He said that it belongs to T.L. Osborne. He will be coming soon for it. A mansion. Yeah. 
But you see, you are too expensive. But I don't think you are expensive. You are nothing. The so-called high and mighty professors and what not. And, and you, some of you, your green card is the most valued asset of all your life. Everything you bow down. You bow. Give me your green card. Give me your green card. Give me your green card. This is everything. You're worshipping it. You sacrifice everything for You sleep with people for it. You sleep with people for it. You lie for it. You change your age for it. You change your name for it. You do everything for this. This is your God. You leave your calling for this. To be able to say that I can live here. Has your background affected you so much you cannot get jump out of it? But you will bow to this. I've seen people abandoning their calling because of this. I've seen it. It's not something I'm, I'm not preaching imaginary things. I'm preaching things I can see and I can call names. What is this? It's all to you. It's not all to me. It's not all to me. Keep laughing. There's a song. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love... No, nobody should sing. That old cross, just you can join me. Where the dear... Where the what? The dearest... And the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Where the dearest and the best, the best climbed the cross for me and for you. And you wouldn't climb the cross for him. Because you are too good for him. Too clever. Too many degrees. Green cards. This, that. Marriage. Children. The one who climbed the cross for you and I is called the dearest and the best. Oh. People say, how can somebody like, what do you mean by some, what nonsense? Because somebody like you and somebody that, who is so undeserved, what, 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 oh, what? Paul said, and for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but down, that I may gain Christ. Some of you have sacrificed God for marriage. And where did it get you? You entered it and you were knocked on your head fully. And you saw that, yes. You have reached nowhere. <laughs> we're the dearest. And the best. The best. When you come to Accra, I have a lot of qualified people who work for me. Not that I don't use their qualification, but they want to work for me. Yeah. And I let them work. They're not too good. I had somebody who was selling books. Uh, family and other people said, why should you sell books? I said, ah, that is what I would. I would sit here and sell the books. How can a doctor this is, that is what I will do? I will sell it. Now she rather say, okay, now she will stay there. She was not supposed to go. Now she will hold the book and says two thousand. Two thousand, two thousand. You have despised the work of God and despise it in your heart. Yes, you have despised it. Don't tell me you haven't despised it. You should repent. When you hear the preaching, don't be plastic. Say sorry to God. Don't say it's not me. It's you. Who is it? Who am I preaching to? I'm not preaching on a tape. I'm talking to you live. And if you, I'm seeing you. That's why I'm preaching. So you can't think, oh, he saw somebody or he's preaching somebody. We are listening to the tape. So not everything applies to us. No, everything applies to you. <laughs> we actually despise God, his church, and his work. It's true. That's why pastors are despised. Full time pastors are despised. 
wo dein Ministry ist bereit. Und dann hatte ein Missionar. Er war going to go on a mission field. And he had just gotten married. And I just thought in my spirit, I said, no, let me find out something. I, I feel something. And I said, your family people are asking, you see. They are not happy that you are going, isn't it? Because they say you've just got married and it's like you're going to be separated from your wife, you see. I said, is that also? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay, don't go. Stay. Then a few weeks or months later, the green card or whatever was also ready. So, but his was not. So she left him. <laughs> you, you get it? So she left him. Straight the same thing. The same thing. Separated from him for a long time, more than even a year, probably. Nobody will talk about that. Because this is greater than God. This is greater than God. It's respected more than God. By most of us. That is why many of these days will come to nothing. And ultimately will have no blessing to us. Because it's the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Blessing of the devil makes rich with sorrow. Satan, look, no dinner is free. No dinner is free. You go and eat it. One guy he was going to do juju, he told me, he said, look, the juju man said, I should do this, I should do this. He said, when he said that, I said, hey, when I do this thing, something is going to happen to me. He told, they told him to remove his, uh, to catch a chicken, remove the feathers, and keep the chicken in a room for seven days without eating, drinking, or what, what are nothing. And then he he should take, put his hand in a grain, uh, in a corn, and put his one hand full, and put it, put the corn on the floor, and the chicken which has not eaten for seven days, neither drank water. Okay, will come out of the room, and after he put the corn here, he set a fire outside. So, when he opens the door, the chicken will come and eat the corn without feathers. <laughs> Are you listening to what I this, this is what people like mystical things. So, the chicken which has not eaten for seven days, neither drank water, will come out of the room, eat the, the corn, and then walk into the fire. Grilled chicken. Then, <laughs> after that, then you know what the guy said? They said that you are going to become a millionaire from that. Then, and so he said, what are the other conditions? And then he told him the other conditions. That the number of grains left on the floor are the number of years left that you will live to enjoy the, to enjoy the prosperity. So if the, and this chicken has not eaten for seven days. <laughs> and you are supposed to put your hand in just one hand like that. <laughs> Maybe it's two hands. I don't know. Maybe it's two hands. The number of corn left is the number of years that you will live to enjoy the, the rest of the prosperity. The devil doesn't have any free blessings. So this. Precious. We, should say, we shouldn't say... We shouldn't sing. Um, what can wash my sins? We should sing. What can help my life today? Nothing but the green, green card. <laughs> Nothing but the presence of the green card. <laughs> That's what we should sing. No, uh, you see, I'm not, it's not a bad thing, but you have to look at what you give up for it. And also, if so, you ask yourself what you will not give up for God and for His work. It's mystical and marvelous. 
Zigiligi. Amen. What do we give up? What do we die for? That's what I'm saying. So I don't want people to tell me I'm doing something too much. And I don't like preaching to people who make me feel like I'm an extremist. That's why I don't go to a lot of places. When I preach, I feel like it's like I'm saying something too much. I'm too... No, no, I don't like it. <laughs> you understand what I say? Because it's not nice to feel odd. I also don't like feeling odd. <laughs> I don't, I don't like to feel like, like I'm some wild, radical. I'm normal. There are a lot of people when I'm a mom, we are all the same. Nobody feels, we don't talk about certain things, sacrifice, or we are happy in Christ. We don't feel that we are extreme or we are something, be too much. No, 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 no. no. Amen. Amen. On a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering. Hey, I saw this your, uh, this, uh, what do you call it? It's not a small thing. <laughs> and I love that old cross, where the dearest and best, for a world of lost sinners was slain. And I'll cherish the old rugged crown Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged crown And exchange it someday for a crown Let's see the next verse. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised. No plastic thing, you know. Just attraction. Does it have a wondrous attraction for you? Or does the green card have a wondrous attraction for you? For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. You see, it says that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. This is what is not in the church. Attraction to what? The cross. What happens at the cross? Suffering, dying, losing. Losing, dying. But today's church, take, take, take. Give, give, give. Me, me, me. Mine, mine, mine. Take. That's us. Take, take, take. Mine, mine, mine. Get, get, get. Keep. <laughs> In that old rugged cross, stained with blood, so divine, a wondrous Beauty I see. Oh. It was, was on that old cross. Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. Next one. To the old rugged cross. I will add that be true its shame and reproach gladly bear oh then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever i'll share and i'll cherish the old rugged cross oh till my trophies at last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday and exchange it Someday for a crown. Keep laughing. 
keep laughing at us, keep mocking, one day we will exchange it for a crown. So despised. Me, I know what I'm talking about. When I talk about despisement, I understand despisement. Because I came... One, look, recently some of my church members came to say one of these rich type of people. He said to me, Pastor, let me show you. You are not liked. Do you know that? <laughs> I said, by who? <laughs> I said, by who? Then he started to say, so, you know, this type of young, yappy type of rich people and so on. Because, you see, I come from that group. You see, the Bible says, Noah, when he built the ark, by building the ark, he condemned the world. He didn't say anything to them. But when he built the ark, he said, and he dare in condemn the whole world. By being, because you can see. Because I come from my, my family, background, school, this, that, that, whatever. Oh, what is that? I've seen all, all those things. That's where I came from. My church is the elite church of the city. You get it? I moved away from that. Down to the underdogs. It, it worries some people. What that guy is he doing? I said a lot of people also like me. Yeah, a lot of people also like me. And he was telling me, he was saying, he said to me, we are always defending you. I said, no, keep on defending, brother. Yeah. But it is despisement. Despisement. Amen. And we the church should not be following to despise God's house and God's servants and priests. And we despise them. That's why we don't want our pastors to prosper. It's true. That's why we only give gifts when we feel they don't have something. Uh, Pastor, I was uh, looking at uh, your shoes and I realized that uh, the Lord touched me to buy you this pair of shoes. So, one day a guy came to give me a shirt. I said, you know something, just give an offering. Put your, put your, I asked, do you pay tithes? <laughs> I said, look, don't come around giving presents. Pay tithes. I don't need your shirt. And what will I do with your shirt? Who knows whether I would like to wear your shirt or not? I don't want to, we don't want to die unless, unless somebody comes to make himself beggarly before you. Down! That's the problem of Ghanaian churches. Always fighting pastors and killing them. Giving them such heartbroken experiences that they have poured their lives into them. And they will turn around and do all sorts of funny things. Instead of appreciating it's because of our struggle over the dollar and the green card. You know something? When you come from a background, you try to overcome that background. That's one of the problems. We have. I was abused when I was a child and so what? It's past. You were, that was when you were a child. You were abused when you were a child. So, I mean, why are you still a child? Move on. Are you still a child? Many of us have had bad experiences as, as children. Uh, whatever, bad and bad boyfriends. Of course, I don't want to. Ah, we are tired of all these things. <laughs> <laughs> Try to overcome your background. Do you understand? Otherwise, it will direct you to the wrong place. When you come from this background of, I mean, poverty stricken, dead well countries, let's come out of it. I was telling Pastor Richard something in London. I said, Look, we were working in Europe. I said to him, Look, if the white man wakes up in Europe, we the black churches, we will be almost irrelevant. You will see how they will do missions, how they will give, how they will sacrifice. Because when they do something and like whatever, if it's sex, pornography, they fully, they, when they are doing this gay, they will do it to marriage, to everything, popes, bishops, everything. I mean, they go all out. And we, we are so influenced by money and by limit. We are limited by financial, whatever things. I, I mean, we got to break out of the background. That seems to limit us. I mean, we got to break out of it. I said, if the white people wake up, 
You know, I met a, I met a man just, uh, just a couple of days ago. He said to me, I preached and after he, when I sat down, he said, thank you for going to the prison. He said, 18 years ago. Huh? No, he said, when I was 18 years old, I murdered somebody. He said to me, he said, I murdered somebody. I was sent to prison. He said, I was in prison. He said, when I was on trial, the head of the jury, he looked at me. He said, I was a drug addict. And I was into so many things. He said, he looked at me and he felt I could be saved. So when they were sentencing him to life, the guy, the jury, in America here, the head of the jury, he said, no, they shouldn't sentence him to life. So in the end, they said, decide what you want. They said, 20 years. So they gave him 20. He was in the prison when they said the prison were full. So they should do computer lottery to see those who should be freed. <laughs> they did. Bah, 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 bah. He was in the <laughs> 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 And he said that he was in the prison when he got, even before the trial started, he got saved. Today he said, Pastor, he said to me, my church alone, we have built 250 church buildings in Kenya. Yeah, 250 church buildings, our church in America. We built 250 church buildings. He said, apart from that, I, apart from other pastors that are white pastors that are taken with me to Kenya and taken with me to those other places and shown them that look come and let's help just like how the Saudi Arabians they finance the Islamic building of uh, uh, mosque and so on every Ramadan they will be building more and more I took a mo- picture of a mosque recently I went to the north I took a picture of standing by a mosque small one small town small mosque like this they will build it he said, we built 250 churches. How many millions? Do they pay, 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 pay. And for us, we can't, we can't, we can't recover from our, our, our Mataheko or uh, where we came from, Toko or I don't know, Cape Coast, Astamakes, somewhere where you came, you cannot recover. Why? Why? You see, people will come for homecoming and they say, oh, we now see what our money is being used for. You are insulting us when you tell us, what have we been using the money for? And who said it is your money? We now see what our money is being used for. Indeed, you now see what your money is being used for. Nonsense. If you don't want to give an offering, don't give. We now know what our money is being used for in the church. That we have seen that it's being... Go and see people building two. This man, he said, I've built 250 churches, buildings. He's finished them. God bless you. When he said that, I just shook his hand and said, God bless you. It was, it was, I said, oh, congratulations. I'm building churches. I know what I'm talking about. You know how much money alone we've used last year to build church building, to buy land, fighting. I have to employ somebody from the bank to come and fight to get land and to build. We, we now know what our money is being used for. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Zimbo, am I safe? Yeah. Spark the car, Pastor Joel. <laughs> 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 Which I'm not fully here, so. <laughs> it's wonderful. We, we have not recovered from our homes. You see, some of us in our home, we didn't use fork, we didn't use knife. It's true, it's true. We didn't use forks, we didn't use knife, we didn't use plates. We haven't seen one before. We, 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 are, we haven't sat at a table before. We didn't know all these things. Do you understand? We are struggling to create, do things. We, we can't understand that somebody can genuinely... You see, in Africa, our leaders just chop our money. They loot the nations. Ooh, it's pathetic. It's sad. I mean, they get a lot of money. And they, in Nigeria alone, they have... They were earning $100 million a day. Oh, from oil in one day. And oh, the last time I was in Lagos, you know how they sell petrol? On the roadside, from, from that speaker to here, you see boys, and 
holding gallons. You stop, you buy. Everybody has a gallon, has a hose, has a funnel. In your car, standard equipment. You see, you don't move. So when we were there, we took our car. They said, where's your gallon? I said, which gallon? We don't have a gallon. <laughs> In Ghana, we don't use gallons. We don't use anything. Where's your gallon? I said, no, we don't have any gallon. If you are buying petrol here, you buy, and you buy by the roadside, you come the bag. How much is that? You pour one. Another guy will come. You pour his own. Like small boys, all of them. There's no petrol in the petrol station. Eh? The sixth largest producer of oil in the ranks of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and so on. And I have a friend who works for a, a, a Shell. He says, a white guy, he says, the, the oil that's Nigeria don't have an idea. And yet it's one of the poorest. See, so it's our background. You will never have a good leader. He will always be stealing your money, looting, spoiling. Therefore, all leaders are like, it's just like somebody who has a bad boyfriend and a good one comes. And you give the good one the treatment of the bad one for the rest of his life. Poor guy. If I had seen him before, he might, I would have advised him about it. I have seen him before. I wish I had seen him before. I would have told him, I have seen one of this same thing before. What do you think? Your, your thing is not as bad, you know. <laughs> okay, I accept. We are we are here. <laughs> hmm. No, we've got to recover all. So that white pastor, he said to me, and he's not finished, he said, youngest amink, I said, I oh, built 250 church buildings, apart from school days, that's 200, I don't think he has any very big church. Said, and I've mobilized more, because come and see, it's needed in Africa. Yeah. This person, what, what are you doing uh, uh, last time you came here, you were speaking about something. You said something, something, church building, you were building. So, so that's why we gave you, where is it? <laughs> is it not what we are doing? And you realize... Because of your first bad boyfriend, the new boyfriend is getting all the bad treatment. You don't mind him. He's very nice. He's faithful, but you're always accusing him. Something. There's that, 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 that. Always. Mercy. Ziggy, ziggy. Zigzag. Zimbabwe. <laughs> That's, that's how we live our lives. We never recover from our head. So we are always limping, 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 limping. And things can be different. We can recover. You understand? You were abused. You were raped. You were this, you were that, this. Like if we now, I mean, we won't see any sign of it. So just move on. Oh. Move on. Release yourself. Amen. Release yourself. Move on in life. Amen. Life is complex and you have to overcome the childhood issues, life's problems, seniors, different things of life. You've got to move on. You've got to wake up. You've got to press on. You can't be in it and let it hold you all till you die. You'll be complaining about the old problem that has never, some problem they won't go. I tell you, it won't go. It will be there. So you can't fight all your life. It's just that thing. Oh man, please, you've got to let go and move on. I say you've got to let go and move on. And as a church and as a people, we've got to let go and move on. Press on, press ahead. Do what God has released us. De link ourselves from coming out of poverty. You know, that someone said, I've been poor before and I've decided. Like one guy, you know, I was talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I was talking to Bishop Nick and he was telling me about one guy. He said, that boy, when he went, I think he said when he stepped on the plane and he looked back, he said, I will never return again. <laughs> and that's how people behave. They say they will never return. They behave differently. You get it? And they have the mind. Something is going to take you away. Make you poor. You know? That's why the Bible says, Blessed is your land when your king is the son of princes. He's from a blessed place. He's not so affected by the downside. You understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you see, you people look back. Oh, we, we always have a problem that cannot release us. Always. We've got to let go. We've got to move on. We've got to delink ourselves from the concept that we will be poor and that we will, dis- we will suffer. We've got to trust God. I said we've got to trust God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God can take care. And God will take care. When Yongicho came, Pastor Ko sang that song. God.